Welcome to our review of Then, a cooperative or team-based party game. Thank you, awesome folk at The Op for sending a review copy of this game our way. Then was designed in-house by The Op and just published earlier this year in 2022. It plays two or more players with games taking under half an hour, except for maybe your first game where you're just trying to figure things out. This was originally released as a Target and Barnes & Noble exclusive, but as of just a couple of weeks ago, you can find it everywhere. Then has an MSRP of $24.99. That is in US. Probably should include that. Now, Venn can be played either as a competitive team game with two teams or a cooperative game with everyone working together. In Venn, players are trying to get their teammates to guess three words by placing some wonky, fun, abstract cards onto a Venn diagram. This is either done against a timer when playing cooperatively or against the other team when playing competitively, and you're incentivized to start guessing first by getting a bonus if you get your words correct. Now, for a look at what you get with this game, including some rather unique do-it-yourself Venn diagram boards for each mm. team, check out our Venn unboxing video on YouTube. Yeah, the most unique component here are these six thin plastic circles in three different colors that you use to make a Venn diagram for each team playing. Uh, you only use one of these when you're playing co-op. These are like super thin, transparent plastic and honestly, one of the oddest board game components I've ever seen. These are basically the board for this game. Okay, maybe not the oddest thing I've seen in a game though, because these cards are really wonky. They're like a mashup of emojis, clip art, stop photos, all kind of copy pasted onto each other at what looks to be a pretty random way. Now, in addition to the cards, you also get a score track, some scoring markers and two smaller decks of cards one with word clues and the other with sets of three numbers. There are plastic stands for the lot. Finally, there's a decent box art included that has a place for everything, but definitely no room for any expansion content in this box insert. Now, one thing that was noted during our unboxing video by the awesome people who joined us in the chat room was that there is a lot of air in this box. The box seems to be designed specifically to hold the round plastic discs that make up the Venn diagrams. The way these are designed, you don't want to get them folded or creased, and the box is designed to prevent this, which makes sense, but leaves a lot of empty space in the box. Yeah, I totally agree. While I do have some other games out there with a lot of air, this one does stick out as having more than most. All right, now we know what you get in a copy of Venn. How about you give us an overview of play? All right, sure. So... Since there are two ways to play, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the team-based competitive mode of play. For this, you divide your game group into two teams. Now, you will need at least four players, two per side, to do this. But after that, really any player count should work as long as everyone can see the cards being placed. Now, while the cards are pretty large, tarot side, I would say, some of the details can be pretty small and are really only going to be seen by people sitting up close. This is probably the biggest problem with large player counts. I would suggest if you have a big group, having each group at their own table may help instead of having people to try and crowd around two Venn diagrams on the same table. Now you're going to set up your Venn diagrams, right? There's going to be one for each team. Now, note you only get two of these in the box, so you are limited to two teams. These are made by taking the three different color discs and putting them somewhere everyone on the team can see within every reach in your typical three triangle, I don't know how to describe that shape, but the, the basic Venn diagram shape. Now, except for the cost, I really don't see any reason you couldn't pick up two sets of Venn and be able to play with three or four teams. If you happen to want to play with a really large group, say over 10 people. Yeah, I don't see any real du disadvantage to this. Like I, you're going to end up with duplicate cards, but I don't see how that would ruin this game at all. Because uh, you even get four scoring counters. Well, you get two scoring counters, but they're two-sided. So if you got another set of those, you'd have four scoring counters right there. Now, speaking of the cards, their next step is to shuffle up all the art cards and split that into three somewhat even decks. You don't have to count exactly. They just have to be fairly close. You're then going to pass one of these decks to each team, and their clue giver is going to take that for the round. And you're going to place the third deck by the scoring track in reach of both clue givers. This is where playing at multiple tables could fall apart a bit, but I'm yeah. sure you could come up with something that works for everyone. Now, the score track is put in the middle of the play area and has numbers 1 to 12. 
This is placed so everyone can see it, and four random word cards are placed next to it. Now, each of these word cards has three words on it, so you end up with 12 words each matched to a number on the score track. This system is pretty brilliant as it adds a ton of replayability as different words will end up assigned to different numbers each game. Mm -hmm. Added to this, the word cards are two-sided and there are a lot of them in the box. Finally, the last step for setting up each round is that each player draws a number of cards, a number cards, right? Not a number of cards, a number card, which they keep private. Only they should see. Uh, you can use the included plastic stands to stand these up, codename style, or you can just place it face down after memorizing what numbers are in each. Now, each of these cards shows three numbers. The clue giver will look at the matching numbers on the score track to figure out what three words they're trying to get their teammates to guess for this round. Again, there's a huge deck of these, though they are one-sided in this case to make it easier to hide the information on these. Uh, the one key thing here is that you have to make sure your teammates cannot see the numbers on these cards. Mm -hmm. That would totally ruin the game. Now you're ready to play the round. Each clue giver now takes their third of the art deck and starts looking through the cards and placing them onto their team's Venn diagram. Now, if you're not quite sure how a Venn diagram works, basically you've got three overlapping circles. The outer circles represent one of the three words, each circle representing one word, not a specific one, but each one represents one of the three words. The next layer in, which some people call the inner circle, has two circles that overlap each area. So those are going to represent two of the words you're trying to get your team to guess. And then, of course, there's the center, which is going to represent all three words. The clue giver will be placing at most one card per region of the diagram though they can cover up a previously placed card if they happen to find something that's better than what they originally placed. Now, the most important thing to watch for here are the verbal and nonverbal clues. Mm -hmm. You don't want any of that going on when playing Venn. The clue giver should be silent, just placing cards, and avoiding even grunts and groans. On the other hand, the guessers should be watching the Venn diagram and the cards placed there, not the motions or body language of the clue giver. You want this game to be all about the abstract art cards and where they're being placed and nothing more. Now, once there's at least one card in your team's Venn diagram, all the players on that team can start guessing and talking about what they think the clue words are. Now, at this point, you're not saying this is what we think they are for sure. You're just discussing it like, hey, I think this fits well, or I think it's that, or no, no, no it can't be that because look, there's a duck. Um, now, what's worth noting here, and something that's not obvious when first hearing about the game, at least I didn't get this, is that there are only 12 words in play. These are the only possible words that both teams are working from. It's not like you're just trying to guess any three words based on the cards. This is an important part of the game that to me wasn't evident at all until I actually started playing. Now, watching what words are possible clues is a bit part of the meta game of Venn. Looking at a card with a fish on it, but knowing fish isn't one of the 12 keywords this round means you need to look at something else on that same card that does tie it to the in-play words. Now, once the clue giver has placed at least three cards into your team's Venn diagram, note they don't have to be in any three specific places, you can decide as a team to make a guess. When doing so, someone yells out, Venn! And then the game stops for everyone, all groups, all players, then stop. Each team then, starting with the team that says Ven, makes their three-word guess. The clue giver then reveals their card with the numbers on it, and the team gets one point for every word that got it right. Now, the team that called Ven also gets a bonus point if they got all three right. And that's your incentive to try to say Ven before your opponents do. After that, the next team's going to score again, getting a maximum of three points for getting all three right, but no bonus points for them. Right, there can be some interesting strategies here for the team that gets three cards down quickly. They can technically call out Ven when the other team doesn't even have three cards up, mm -hmm. which should impact their ability to guess all three words. But rushing and getting your own words wrong may not be worth that chance. Now remember, each clue giver only has one third of the art deck. Now at any point during the round, you can swap your deck for the one by the scoreboard. There's no penalty for this other than it takes time. And interestingly, if like both players end up swapping, it's actually possible to see every card in the game during one round, trying to find a perfect match. Now, this is something that is very player dependent. Some clue givers start tossing down cards right away, trying to get as much information out there as possible, while others are very picky, trying to find the perfect card for each mm. section of their Venn diagram. 
Now, each round after scoring points, you put out new word cards, select a new clue giver, and the game continues like this until one team scores at least 12 points. At the end of that round, whoever has the most points wins. And if there's a tie, it's the team that scored the most points in that final round that takes the game. That's how you play Venn competitively in teams. Now let's move on to cooperative play. Uh, playing Venn cooperatively is pretty much identical to playing uh, competitively, which is why I wanted to cover that first. Now, cooperatively, you're only using one Venn diagram and one clue giver who should rotate every round. Here, you don't bother splitting the cards up. The clue giver gets the entire deck. Now, here's the part where it gets interesting. You're going to start the game by drawing five numbered cards and stacking them off to the side. The rest can go in the box. You then, <coughs> excuse me, you then generate words as usual, right? You're going to have 12 words and play every round. Now, every round, the clue giver is going to draw the top of those number card decks, which they, of course, keep secret so no one can see it, and then has two minutes to get their team to guess three words exactly as I described above. Now, at the end of two minutes, the team makes their guesses and the clue giver reveals their number card. Now, the group only gets one point per less correct guess. There's no competition here, so there's no Venn bonus. Now, the group has a total of five rounds to get to 12 points. Remember, you put out five uh, number cards. If they manage that, they win. If you run out of number cards before that, though, you lose. In addition to these two methods of play, there are two competitive game variants. The first is for a longer game in which you just play best of three. With the first team to get 12 twice wins the game. The second is the expert variant, which forces the clue giver to place their first clues in the inner or center zones of their Venn diagram. Now, I will admit I haven't personally tried these two variants, but I can't see them changing up gameplay that much. Like the first sounds great for a big group event where you want to keep people occupied for more than half an hour, right? It turns your, your one hour game night into an hour and a half game night, or maybe even two hour with some time between rounds. And while the second one, it's a little odd to me because already in our plays, I've seen the middle or outer regions be used first by multiple different clue givers. So I honestly can't see that having much of an impact at all. It sounds like we're already sharing some of our thoughts on Ben. So let's move on to what we thought of Ben. So this is one of those games from the op that I just had to try as soon as I heard about it. The concept drew me right in. It reminds me of Hughes and Cues in that way, a party game that's doing something interesting and clever I've never seen before. Yeah, indeed. I was certainly intrigued as well uh, as how logic puzzles of this nature might play out in a gamified manner. Now, what was most interesting to me about Venn was that I had absolutely no clue how the game was going to actually play and feel at the table when re learning the rules. Now, with like Hughes and Cues, I read it and I'm pretty much knew exactly how the game was going to play after reading the rules. This wasn't the case for Venn at all. And I'm guessing people listening now may even be having the same problem problem not quite getting how exactly this works like many party games the people you play with how into it they get and what kind of thought process they have are going to impact how the game plays with mm -hmm. your group we've all seen examples of people playing charades or pictionary who are sure they're giving the most obvious clue yes. but no one else there understands the direction they're coming from at how they're getting to that answer now, the part I didn't really get until playing was that you're trying to get the team to guess three words from a subset of words, which is why I actually stressed that in the game description, because the how to play video I watched didn't really point that I didn't get it. And I watched an actual play and I still didn't quite get it. This really makes a huge difference. You're not trying to figure out what the person's trying to say from each card, and what the card means. No, you're trying to figure out what part of that card ties to up to three of the 12 words in play. And also knowing where it's played. If it's on the outside, it's one thing in that card that ties to one word. If it's played in the middle, there's three things in that card that ties to three words. It's this limiting of clue space, I guess we'll call it, that really makes Venn work. And work even better than I actually expected it to be when I first heard about this game. Though at the same time, this might actually, for some more advanced groups, Make it too easy, or at least easier than they expected. So then you could probably just toss in a house rule where the clue giver writes down three words, or even better, write down three words and give them to the other team. <laughs> other highlights include the amount of replayability in this box. The way the word cards, number cards, and that 1 to 12 number track combine really works well. The two-sided word cards are also really quick to set up, especially since you put four out for one round, and then when you start the next round, just flip them all over nice and quick and makes it nice and fast between rounds. 
Um, drawing new cards is quick too, right? You just grab four cards off the top of the deck. And when you're shuffling just now and then, remember to flip the deck upside down. The sheer number of cards you get is also impressive, which also led to an interesting bit in this game that I didn't realize when, again, reading how to play, watching how to play videos, is that both teams could very well be trying to guess some of the same words. I don't know. You might even be able to guess exactly the same three words. I don't know if the number cards ever duplicate. I didn't, I haven't seen that happen, but I have seen two words in common. And that's something, again, I didn't even consider. I personally found it fascinating that both teams could be in a way fighting over the same cards, trying to find the perfect match for the same words. It would be interesting to see long term if you start to know the image deck and start looking for that card that yep. you know can drop in the middle or perfectly blend two words that you've got. Now, the most unobvious thing about this, and this is the thing I can't really see how to communicate well is except through a play when a review like this is what we found to be the most fun part. And that's the period at the end of the round where the clue giver tries to explain and sometimes justify their card choices and where they place them. Our games included lots of, okay, wait, how does this relate to rigid? What, what, how does that mean rigid? Or why, why is that? Why'd you pick that card for love? Or the opposite side of, hey, how could you not see this card has an animal for zoo war because the animals look like they're about to fight and loud because they're yelling at each other? Yeah, it's much like uh, the person in Pictionary trying to get you to je guess Jaws by drawing successively bigger boats. Yes. Sure, it works when you hear them explain, we're going to need a bigger boat. But in the rush of the game, it's not especially helpful. Yeah. And then talking about the cards, I don't know what to say about these. Uh, other than to say they work, they work rather well for this game. I really have a strong feeling these cards were specifically created for this game and are specifically tied to the words included in this game. And due to this, I'm actually dubious about the game playing well if you toss in other art cards from any of those other games with winsable cards in them. And I've seen a lot of people suggest this. Well, I think it would work. I just don't think it would work as well as using the cards designed for this game. This is sort of reinforced by the lack of any artists listed on the game. Yeah. Most likely it's a stock art subscription mashed together and quickly while looking at a word list to reference. Yeah, and I honestly think that is what happened here. I, I really do think this is a mashup of emoji, stock art, and clip art all kind of mashed together. Now, this case leads to my only concern about the game. It's one Sean already mentioned, but I didn't want to call it out right then. Um, I am slightly concerned that groups that end up playing a lot of this game are going to run into a problem. Now, like the deck's huge. There are 100 double-sided art cards. That's 200 unique pieces of art. But I can see some players finding certain cards just right for certain words and i can also see the group think forming that happens with these kind of games say if brenda plays this card on the outside you know it means this word and i can see clue givers flipping through decks quickly looking for that one specific card they know is there and cards being used for the same thing over and over now honestly i think all this goes out the window if you just swap up who's playing with who when you mix up your groups or throw a new player in the mix Plus, it's only going to come up if you play this game a lot and in a frequency where players are going to remember the cards between plays. So this entire point may be moot, but it is a concern I have. I wonder if the simplest solution might not be manipulating the word deck, perhaps removing for a while some of the cards with words on them that have come up more uh, too often. So rather than worrying about the art deck, uh, limit yeah. the word deck, because again, there's a, there's a significant number of words. I don't know how oh, yeah. many, but... There's yeah, enough in know. there that if you pull out, you know, 40 cards, even you're still going to have a lot of words to, to go through. Yeah. Yeah, that's possible. And like I said, this may not even be a problem. Um, we do play games multiple times before we review them, but I definitely haven't played this enough to memorize the cards. <laughs> there are certain ones that I really like, though. And now what I know is like, I know there's this set of cards that have animals on them, but I'm not looking for one card. I'm just looking for one of a group. Plus, there's a the whole thing where you dent, unless you're playing cooperative, you don't have the whole deck. And there's time limits and there's reasons you might want to rush. I don't know. It's, just, it's a concern. I wanted to point out my concern that this might be a thing. I, have, I can't confirm that concern, but the, I think the concern's there. All right, final thoughts. Overall, I was really looking forward to checking out Venn, and I'm glad I did. While the entire concept of a game using abstract artwork and a Venn diagram to get people to guess words sounds fascinating, 
It wasn't until I sat down to play that I learned just how well it works in practice. This is a very cool idea that plays honestly better than it sounded, at least to me. If you dig party games where one player is trying to get the rest of the players to guess something, like charades that Sean mentioned earlier, this is going to be the perfect game for you. This is that style of game. If you like team-based games, Venn's going to be worth checking out. This is one of the more unique, interesting, you split up into two groups and everyone's involved. Uh, which leads me to the next one. If you like quick party games where everyone has something to do every round all the time, this is going to beat out a lot of other games where people are taking turns. You're either giving clues or you're helping everyone guess together. I think then it could be a great fit for a group where you want everyone involved all the time. If you enjoy funky art on cards and interpreting that fine artwork, uh, you're going to enjoy checking out the art in Venn and trying to tie that to specific keywords. I think, I think there is a certain group, there are friends I know that will dig just that aspect of the game a lot. Now, if you don't enjoy real-time guessing games or being put on the spot as a clue giver, you're probably not going to enjoy Venn. So in the second case, I don't see why you can't skip over a player who's uncomfortable giving clues and just let them help with the guessing. If you don't like party games, it's a party game. This is very much a party game. This isn't the game for you. There's no strategy or tactics here other than realizing that your three words are a subset of 12. Beyond that, it's all social interaction, interpretation, and laughs. Personally, I'm glad we agreed to check this one out. I'm looking forward to breaking it out at bigger events like birthdays, Extra Life, and New Year's. I want to get that 10-player game going with four people guessing and one person giving clues. To me, Venn sits right in the middle of a diagram, including fun, easy to learn, and unique. Well, that's it for our review of Venn. While party games aren't really our forte here at Big Tabletop Bellhop, now and then we find one that just grabs us and doesn't let go. What's a game that you enjoy outside of your usual genre? Tell us all about it in the comments below. One last thing, I invite you to also check out my written review of Venn over at tabletopbellhop.com where there'll be plenty of pictures of the diagrams with art cards on them. You can kind of see just how odd these cards are. <laughs>